How's it going everyone? Blake here from ChessPathways.com. It is time for some more Blitz Chess today. So let's see how this goes. I don't think we've seen E4, E5 in a while in any of these videos. So here we get a Roy Lopez. For anyone who doesn't know, we're playing three minutes with a two second increment, just to avoid any crazy time scrambles at the end as we see a Berlin defense here. I had a nice win in this line the other night, which I did not record. Hopefully this one goes uh, similarly. <laughs> So this is all pretty standard. Uh, black gets the pair of bishops, white gets the better pawn majority. Okay, and the king e8 line. Um, let's play h3. And I like the idea to play the early bishop f4 in some lines. I might go for that depending on what black does here. In the game I played the other night, I just played bishop f4. Uh, I think I played b3, c4 before ever even playing knight c3. Black basically gave me everything. I think probably black should play uh, a bit quicker than that, but it's kind of hard to with your king in the center. And then I just slowly retreated, pushed my majority, and uh, and won the game. Uh, so let's play bishop f4. Let's keep a bit flexible over here, because in some lines I like playing c4 early. Um, the nice thing about that is it's hard for black to ever play bishop e6, bishop uh, bishop d5 in some cases if the knight moves away. Um, okay, h5, stopping the early g4. I think often to take advantage of that you play an early knight g5 after bishop e6. Um, let's just play c4, though. I'm kind of curious how this is going to work out. Um, because I think you can play this way. And then b3, knight c3. Now, the downside is black could play a quick, um, uh, quick strike on the queen side in some cases, trying to get rid of their doubled pawns. Like against b5, you have to watch out for that. Maybe a6, b5. Here it doesn't work, though, because we just went a pawn. Um, so, so far I'm pretty happy with the position. Okay, b6. Um, and now the challenge is pushing this majority, especially because black has played this move uh, pawn to h5. So here's where you have to think kind of more long term. Does it make sense to exchange the set of rooks here? I think it probably does. So let's play, well, I don't know, knight g5 is another option. And I know often after knight g5, black plays rook h6, um, which is kind of a, a nice idea there. I think that tactically works out for black in this position too. Um, any idea with g4 here is going to be a bit premature. I could just play... I could just play bishop h2 and just kind of stay flexible. It's hard to see if black has any active plan in a position like this. Um, but of course the two bishops could be strong if the position opens up. Okay, h4, interesting. Really trying to clamp down on our uh, majority there. Let's exchange a set of rooks. Oh, I see. They probably want to run the other way with the king and, and prepare to bring the rook to the uh, to the d-file. And I was thinking maybe here knight e4, knight g5. And here's the nice point about the pawn being on c4. There's no bishop d5. There is b5, though, trying to uh, to kind of uh, get rid of the double pawns. But I think you're less inclined to play that with your king on the queen side, just a gut feeling. And I, I just want to play knight g5, I think. Okay, you're going to stop knight g5. Um, makes sense. But now your rook can't contest the open file, which is nice. Uh, let's prepare knight g5 some more. It's bishop f4. I'm trying to think of what black's ideas might be here. Maybe black even wanted to play g5 themselves. Um... But I'm thinking if nothing changes, we're going to play knight e to g5 next turn. Uh, just getting rid of black's pair of bishops. That might be a nice, uh, nice, uh, you know, a small little operation. Do we want to centralize our king? Or I think we probably do at this phase of the game. Probably. Although we do have to watch out for the g-pawn. It is kind of fixed in place by the h-pawn. Uh, you don't want to allow, you know, a rook coming to the g-file in some cases with, uh, with threats to the g-pawn. Okay, five, interesting. Uh, I don't think there's any real threat with that, and I think black has to be a little careful about opening up the queen side. Um, again, that b5 idea to get rid of the doubled pawns could be an idea, um, but I'm not really too worried about it. I think here we're just going to play knight e to g5. And this gets rid of your pair of bishops one way or the other. White still has that long-term advantage of having the better pawn majority. If all the pieces came off the board, that would be enough to win. 
Okay, and I don't think there's a rush. We can just leave this knight where it is for now. Let's maybe activate the king. King f1. I don't see anything you can really do. Okay. Is black just doing nothing? Just waiting to see what we do? Okay, here comes a4. Um, now, we can take on e6 and take on a4 and be super greedy. I'm not sure if that's good for us. I'm pretty sure I do want to take on uh, on e6, though, because then if nothing else... Well, I was thinking we have some knight d4 ideas, either trading off some pieces or going after the pawns. Um, can we be super greedy and take this a4 pawn? I think we... I'm really considering it. You have no active play here. And, uh, yeah, I kind of like that idea. We're up a pawn, for what it's worth. There are terrible pawns, but uh, it's our pawn minority, so who cares? And we still have this 4-on-3 healthy majority. I just want to trade some pieces off now, I think. Knight d4 could be coming. I'd be happy to trade a set of knights, I think. All the pawns are on light squares, so your bishop can't get to them. You always have to watch out for, uh, for rook d7 now, penetrating, because we got rid of your light bishop. I think this is pretty much how white wants the Berlin to go. Just very slowly build up your advantages. <laughs> okay, now uh, bishop g5 could be considered... Um, I kind of like that. Where does the bishop go? Maybe just to c5, though, and we're not actually threatening the pawn. So maybe not. What about knight d4? I think that forces knights off the board. Knight d4 takes, takes. Your bishop still has nothing active to do as far as I can see. You can't play rook d8, I don't think, because we just take. Okay, fine with that. Okay. This bishop's a really bad piece, I think. It has no, no squares it can go to. Now, I'm guessing you're going to play, like, king here and bring the rook to a8. That is a concern. We can't play that. Okay. Uh, rook f3. I don't love having to play that. Now you're going to play rook d8, I think, and we just have to come back. Um, but I think we can play g3 if you try that again. Oh, really? You want to play the pure bishop in game with the, with, the, with the majorities being like they are and all your pawns fixed on dark squares? I guess maybe you're hoping to penetrate with the king, but I can keep you out, I think. Now I just want to roll the majority. Yeah, I'll keep your king out. And you can't do anything about that. I'm just going to walk over here. I think this is like the perfect, uh, you know, what you want in the Berlin. You just win the endgame with your better majority. And the extra pawn at this point. Yeah, can you do anything? I control all the squares. I think you have nothing to do. b 5 is not happening. King penetration is not happening. The bishop has no squares at all. And I'm pretty sure it's just a strategic uh, win here. I think we can even play bishop g5 at this point. Your bishop just can't do anything. Well, now just f4, f5 wins, I think. f4, f5. And that should be that. Yeah, this pawn is just a queen. Uh, no, don't even bother. That should be game over. Eight seconds, seven. Will they lose on time? Let's see. Will they resign with, I'm going to call 0.4 seconds they resign. Nope. Okay. Lost on time. All right. Um, so that's basically the perfect uh, example of what you want in the Berlin. You just neutralize Black's pair of bishops and your uh, your healthy pawn majority wins the end game. I'm sure I didn't play perfectly, but that felt pretty uh, <laughs> pretty textbook to me. So let's actually check with an analysis board. I'm curious if Black has any better way to play there in the opening, because I feel like letting me play, you know, b3, c4, bishop f4, I feel like white gets everything they want in this line. This is like my own little system to play against the Berlin. Um, so let's check this out. So I know this system with h5 is uh, is kind of a common one here for Black. I'm kind of curious how often this has been uh, been played. Okay, only 13 times here, because bishop f4 is not the most popular system. It's just kind of my personal preference. And yeah, here everyone plays knight c3. So there has to be something wrong with my little uh, c4, b3 idea. I wonder what it is. After c4, um, and see, I, this is the position where I, I, I don't fully trust a computer here to tell me what's wrong with this. I'll check. Um, yeah, okay, rook g8. 
to me, it's not obvious why this idea is wrong or why no one plays it. So I guess I'll keep playing it until someone proves to me why I can't. But it feels like black doesn't really have any active play. It's never too easy to get b5 in, is it? Maybe here you play b5 before I play knight c3? I don't know. I'm trying to think about how I would handle uh, a b5 in this position. Because if I take, now you have a healthy 3-on-2 majority with the pair of bishops. I don't like that. And you are threatening the, uh, the c4 pawn. Maybe there, though, just knight d2 might be reasonable. And now your pawns are a bit weaker than they were before, I think. So maybe knight d2 and, uh, I don't know, rook c1 coming next. Thinking about uh, exploiting the open file, you're still uh, having coordination problems because your king's in the center. So b5 seems pretty double-edged. It's by no means, you know, amazing for black to play that move. And rook d8, knight c3, this feels very similar to, uh, to how the other game went the other night that I was talking about. Where I just got to play bishop f4, b3, c4, knight c3, connect my rooks. Uh, white gets everything they want, black has no counterplay. Okay, b6, you just start doing, you know, nothing. Uh, bring the bishop back, swap. I eventually prepare knight g5 and get rid of your pair of bishops while you're doing nothing. Uh, there goes the pair of bishops, and then I just accept this pawn, which I probably don't have to, but I kind of like the idea now, just because black's not doing anything. None of your pieces have any squares that are useful. And then certainly c5, I think, is the last nail in the coffin, because now the bishop's just a horrible, horrible piece. And uh, you can't trade rooks. I was really surprised by that. I thought you were going to come back, and I was thinking I could play g3 um, and just start trading stuff off on the side where I have the majority, get this outside 2 on 1. Um, I thought I might have to do that. Um, but trading rooks, yeah, the bishop in game is completely unplayable. I have a healthy majority, you have no majority, and your pawns are fixed on dark squares. So I knew that was a win. If you would like to join one of my coaching programs so I can work with you to develop an opening repertoire that lets you do stuff like this, then by all means, please click that link down in the description. You can book a call. We'll talk about if my programs are a good fit for you, and we can get started. If not, thank you for watching. Make sure you visit chesspathways.com and get signed up there. That's totally free, and I'll send you a free move-by-move -move guide to chess thinking when you sign up. I'll put a link down in the description for that as well, and I will talk to you all soon.